Hello, this is Rupinder Syal and welcome again to Spartan Tutorials. Today we are going to talk about an exciting new development and that is the availability of complete human genome sequence. This human genome sequence is complete in all its respects except the Y chromosome but for all the 22 autosomes which are the non-sex chromosomes and the X chromosomes this is a complete sequence from telomere to telomere and it is developed by a consortium of scientists that is called the telomere to telomere consortium. So let's talk about this exciting new development. Now some of you might be wondering, didn't we do the complete human genome sequence in 2001, about 20 years back? So yeah, you are probably right, but half right. Yes, we did sequence majority of the human genome back in 2001 after the start of the human genome project from 1990 in 2001. So two papers were published back to back, one in Nature, one in Science, one by the public consortium led by Professor Francis Collins at NIH and the other led by J. Craig Venter at Celera Genomics. That was a private initiative. So that was considered the draft human genome and it was publicized a lot. You can see this uh, archival picture of at that time US President Bill Clinton standing to the right of him is J. Craig Venter who is the CEO of Celera Genomics and on the left you can see Professor Francis Collins. By the way, Francis Collins is kind of famous for mapping the cystic fibrosis gene by chromosome walking and jumping you know, back in 1989 and you know, now he's the head of the NIH. So this was the background 2001 draft human genome sequence and this was almost 92% you know, of the human genome sequence which is 3 billion base pairs. Now there were a couple of issues with that sequence. One is that there were a lot of repeat sequences that were missed because at the time sequencing technologies either by the shotgun sequencing which was pioneered by Celera Genomics, the private initiative, as well as the map based sequencing or the hierarchical sequencing developed by the government initiative or the government research organizations. So the sequencing technology available at that time was not generating long enough reads to accurately map the repeat regions which are very hard to disentangle because they are just repeats of either dinucleotides so G A G A G A and there are many other types of repeats in the genome so the sequencing technologies available during the early 2000s did not have the technology to really disentangle these repeat sequences. Apart from this many centromeric repeats which are very important for understanding chromosome function as well as the acrocentric regions of many chromosomes, especially chromosome 13, 14, 15, these are acrocentric chromosomes, so their P arms, which are the short arms of these chromosomes, they were having missing sequences. So there was a lot of sequence which was missing. And at that time, they were just represented by ends. So a string of ends, just representing that this is the sequence that is missing here. Now this was not due to the fact that they were not important, this was just a limitation of the technology at that time. And in 2003, the International Human Genome Sequencing Consortium, which is the public consortium, basically announced that okay, we are almost done with the euchromatic portion of the genome. As you can see from the abstract of this, there are a couple of points here. There are 2.85 billion nucleotides. So as I said, this is actually 3 billion base pairs. So there are 0.15 billion base pairs still missing. There are 341 gaps, although they say only 341 gaps, but still it's a lot. About one you know, event per 100,000 bases, that is the error. So there are a lot of errors also. So this was the state of the science around 2003. After that, there were just incremental improvements. The most recent improvement was, was done in 2019, and that was the uh, GRCH38 release. 
So then a lot of new sequencing technologies came into the market which promised much longer reads with higher accuracy and these were PAC Biosciences as well as Oxford Nanocore Technologies. So an international team of scientists made this consortium which is called the Telomere to Telomere Consortium. It is an open community based effort to generate the first complete assembly of a human genome. This was the consortium. I think they will branch out to further genomes and other model organisms also because they also have some missing parts, some of them. So they will definitely work on refining those assemblies also. But this was the you know, uh, consortium that was founded and they had a proof of concept. They worked on Oxford nanopore sequencing, which utilizes this incredible new technology where every time a nucleotide passes, it generates a small current and that is rec recorded by the instrument and it is a very efficient long read sequencing technology. So this was one technology that was uh, used and the other one was the Pacific Biosciences or PAC Bio Hi-Fi Circular Consensus Sequencing. Basically what they are doing is they are taking double stranded DNA which they want to sequence. They ligate adapters which basically circularize the sequence and then they anneal the primer and bind the DNA polymerase and what they do is they repeatedly sequence the same DNA strand again and again and that helps in improving the accuracy of the sequence. Okay, So initially they have some errors but with enough passes they get a consensus sequence. So that is why it's called circular consensus sequencing. So this helps in reducing the error rate of these sequencing technologies. So PAC Bio Hi-Fi circular se consensus sequencing has a much lower error rate as compared to the normal PAC Bio or the Oxford Nanopore sequencing, which is, so the conventional rate is about 15% with longer reads, but with Hi-Fi circular consensus sequencing, the error rate is less than 0.01%. So they, they, could, they were getting 99.99% accurate reads, which is very important for improving the assembly. And they had proof of concept. So back in 2020, they published the telomere to telomere assembly of a complete human X chromosome. So this is from a cell line that they were using and they sequenced the complete human X chromosome from that. And then they also completed the telomere to telomere assembly for chrom human chromosome 8, which is one of the pretty big chromosomes. So as you remember that human chromosomes are arranged from 1 to 22 based on their size. So 8 is kind of one of the larger ones. So they had the proof of concept and now they have published a paper which is available on BioArchive. So I would like to mention that this is a public server where researchers submit their papers before it has undergone peer review and it, before it has undergone complete you know a scrutiny by other scientists of the field who are knowledgeable about this topic so it is not final publication yet there may there may still be changes before its final publication but this is available for public scrutiny okay so this is a very useful resource and i am taking the data for today's video from that so there may be changes there may be you know some mistakes pointed out by other experts. I am not the expert definitely on this topic. So, so take it with a grain of salt. So the source of this genome, what is the source? It is a complete high RTD form mole or CHM. That's why this assembly is also called CHM13. So what is a complete high RTD form mole? It is basically a cancerous growth. It is kind of an aborted fetus because it is fertilized by a sperm and the egg does not contain the nucleus. So it can be a complete mole or a partial mole. So it can be formed by multiple different mechanisms. So there are three mechanisms shown here. One is that you have a complete mole where a 23x sperm fertilizes an empty ovum and then it undergoes duplication so you have 46x x karyotype or you can have diaspermy where 23x or y sperms they fertilize the same 
empty ovum and then it leads to 46xx or 46xy karyotype 46yy karyotype is not observed for some unknown reason we don't know the biology behind that so it is kind of a kind of a benign tumorous growth and this was the source of the genome so why it is so important to get from this why not choose another cell line because it is a very homozygous source of genetic material there is no heterozygosity here because there is chromosome duplication for the sperm so you get 46 chromosomes and all of them are identical to each other and you have xx so there are two copies of the x they are all just copies of 23 along with the x chromosomes okay so 23 chromosomes with 22 autosomes and x chromosomes so i should probably write 22 here so as you can probably guess they don't have the sequence of the y chromosome here but they are working on that as well now here is a kind of a graphical representation of the overall chromosome structure and how they are represented so there are some gaps or you know some uh, areas where there is slight uh, you know ambiguity about the sequence but overall it is a complete sequence assembly so it is a telomere to telomere assembly of the complete chromosome and here you can see a graphical representation of different chromosomes so there are a couple of different tracks here we have the top track middle track and the bottom track the bottom track shows the gene density and this is shown in green you can see the green density on different chromosomes so here you can also see some black and red regions the red indicates new paralogs identified by them so there were a lot of new paralogs paralogs are basically genes which have duplicated in the same organism as compared to orthologs so for example if we have insulin gene in human two copies insulin one and insulin two or whatever for example hexokinase one hexokinase two three four they are all paralogs because they all are duplications of the same hexokinase gene in the human genome whereas another gene x which is present in human and it is also present in dog or cat and it is derived from a common ancestor that is an ortholog okay so they identified a lot of new paralogs and they are indicated by red in this bottom track black is the new sequence that they have obtained and they are highlighting it here in the bottom track so this is the sequence that they have unambiguously mapped and sequenced so this is completely brand new sequence as you can see there are a lot of chunks of this sequence okay so this was all missing before and now they have filled those gaps in the middle track you see only two colors we have some blue bars and some red bars so the blue bars represent segmental duplications so these are duplications of small parts of the genome so segmental duplications are shown in blue and centromeric satellite regions are shown in red centromeric satellites so these are repeat sequences these are shown in red okay so a lot of them as you can see here so these are all centromeric repeats and finally we have the top track in the top track they are looking at ancestry analysis so they have done some ancestry analysis and they have identified that okay some sequences have some eurasian ancestry or european ancestry some sequences have southeast asian or east asian ancestry so that is the ancestry analysis shown in here you can see the legend here chm13 ancestry so these are the different ancestry analysis that they have done they have also indicated some neanderthal introgression which has been you know coming out in recent papers for neanderthal genomes that we inherit about two percent of the neanderthal dna so evidence of interbreeding between humans and neanderthals uh, here is a graph showing 
how much sequence they have. So the earlier drafts of the human genome, they had you know about 2.5, 2.6, 2.7, some something like that gigabase. But now this is the you know the outlier. This is the final version. So this is 3.055 gigabase pairs. Okay. So this is the most complete sequence assembly yet. So just to point out the salient features of the new assembly, the source of this genome is the complete form mole with 46XX karyotype. They have sequenced 238 megabase pair of brand new sequence in this human genome. So they have filled a lot of gap. About 8% of human genome is contributed new by this new assembly. Total sequence now, as I said, it's 3.055 billion base pair. They identified about 2000 new paralogous gene copies. Okay. And they sequence the entire P arms. P arms are the short arms of the chromosomes because P stands for petite in French. So all five acrocentric chromosomes, 13, 14, 15, 21, 22, they have sequenced. And major types of new sequence that they uncovered. So these were actually the hard to sequence parts of the human genome earlier. What are those? Centromeric satellites. They play a hugely important role in chromosome function. So it is really important to get those sequences right. Segmental duplications, very important part of human genome diversity. And they also play an important part in, for example, DNA fingerprinting and ribosomal DNA. These are huge arrays, about 45 KB of you no, know, just direct, almost identical repeats. So 45,000 base pair, identical repeats. These sequences were very hard to sequence before, but with the advent of Oxford Nanopore technology, as well as PacBio, Hi-Fi circular consensus sequencing, they are able to do that. Okay, so I hope the peer review will be done very soon for this paper and we will soon see it in print with all the modifications and hopefully some uh, other genome scientists can better enlighten us with all the you know details about the algorithms and the graphs that they have used to uh, you know assemble this genome i am not an expert on those so it is out of my you know out of my level if you have any doubts comments or questions about this video please let me know as always thank you for watching and i'll see you next time